Welcome to my haunted TBR! My name is Lexi and welcome back to my channel. So as a lot of you know, fall is my very favorite time of the year and October is my very favorite month out of the entire year. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I went uh, pretty hard on this TBR. There's a lot of books. During the month of October, I am participating in two readathons. I'm participating in Spookathon, and this is hosted by Lala. I'll go ahead and link her channel down below. And then I'm also participating in Witchathon, and this is hosted by Rhiannon at Crescent Moon Reads, and I will list their channel down below as well. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and get into the TBRs. So my first TBR is actually the very first secret TBR and a secret video that I've ever done on my channel and yeah. I'm so excited about it. And I can't show you any of the books yet, but here's a preview of all of the books that I'm reading for that specific vlog and secret video. And that should be up actually, hopefully within the first two weeks of October and I'm really excited about it. It's very spooky. There are five physical books right there and then a sixth one that I'm listening to on audio for it and it's a lot of reading already, but we'll move on, it's fine. The next TBR I'm gonna show you is my Spookathon TBR. Just a few quick words on Spookathon if you are not familiar with the readathon. It takes place from October 14th until October 20th, and this is hosted every single year by Lala. I love it so much. It's like one of my very favorite readathons on YouTube. The first prompt is to read a thriller, and for this one, I am going with Neverworld Wake, and this is by Marisha Pessel. I have been wanting to read this book for such a long time. I feel like I've mentioned it in so many of my videos and it's finally gonna happen. So I don't know a ton going into this book. I know it's about a girl named Beatrice whose boyfriend passes away tragically and she goes to kind of like this island, I think, or maybe it's just on the coast with her friends and I think a man comes in the middle of the night when there's a big storm and knocks on the door and says that time has stopped until all of them have to make like an impossible decision. And then once they come to that impossible decision, time will pick back up. And it sounds really cool. Obviously it has some weird elements of magical realism thrown into that and I can't wait. It sounds really, really awesome. So yay, never world wake. Okay. Prompt number two, read a book with red on the cover. And for that, I am going with Dark Matter, and this is by Blake Crouch. I'm really, really excited. I've heard amazing things about this book, and I've been really wanting to read it for such a long time. This book is about a man named Jason, and Jason is a professor of physics, and he has a wife and a son. He goes out one night for a walk, and then he is hit on the head, or something happens, and when he wakes up, he's still himself, but he has a totally different life. He's like considered a genius and he's made all of these amazing discoveries in the physics world. He doesn't have a wife anymore. He doesn't have a son anymore. And he's trying to figure out what's happening. He's trying to figure out if his other life was a dream or if he's stuck in a dream or if he somehow stumbled upon like an alternate reality. So it sounds really, really good. There's supposed to be lots of really dark twists and turns. Um, I've heard mixed things. I've heard that this is really scary and I've heard that this is not so scary. So I'm not sure, but pretty sure I'll be terrified because I don't ever read thrillers. So I can't wait for this. Question number three, read a book with a spooky word in the title. And for this one, I have gone with a tale dark and grim. And I feel like grim is a pretty spooky word, I think, right? Yeah, and dark, dark is, the dark is very spooky. Ooh. Who's afraid of the dark? Actually, I'm not, I, I enjoy, I don't sleep with the nightlight. So this is a retelling of Hansel and Gretel, except it's like a dark retelling. This is my only middle grade on this particular TBR and I'm really, really excited about it. So I can't wait to read this and see what tales Hansel and Gretel go into. Prompt number four is to read a book with a spooky setting. 
And for this one, I chose House of Salt and Sorrows, and this is by Erin A. Craig. And I actually started this one, I don't know if you can see some of the tabs, and I realized that actually it would be perfect for Spookathon, so I quickly stopped, and I'm just gonna go ahead and finish. But I'm, I'm only, I think I only got to like page 20. And I chose this one because I feel like it has the most spooky setting. It's off of the coast in like this old castle called Highmore, and the castle might or might not be haunted. What sounds more perfect than that? So this is actually a dark retelling of the 12 dancing princesses and it follows our main character Anna Lee who is trying to figure out why her sisters are all dying and she is convinced that they are being murdered. So it's a little bit of like a fantasy, it's a little bit of a fairy tale retelling and it's a little bit of a murder mystery. Perfect. Prompt number five, read something that you wouldn't normally read. And for that one, I am choosing Saw Kill Girls, and this is by Claire Legrand. To be honest, I wouldn't read normally any thrillers because I am very scared of thrillers and things that go bump in the night. However, I'm going to be expanding this a little bit. It's kind of fun to be scared around Halloween. Not like too terrified, but a little bit of scary is a good thing. So this is something that I wouldn't normally pick up just because I normally wouldn't go for something scary. So this book follows three girls, Marion, Zoe, and Val, and they live on a place called Sawkill, or Sawkill Rock, I think, and there is a monster that is apparently lurking in the woods. And I think these three girls kind of team up to try to take down and defeat the monster. Don't really know much about that, but I know there's a monster, I know it's supposed to be scary, and I'm in. Okay, and that's it for my Spookathon TBR. Let's move on now to the Witchathon TBR. So Witchathon is a readathon hosted by Rhiannon at Crescent Moon Reads, and I will link their channel down below. It takes place from October 24th until October 31st, and it has seven challenges, which I'm very excited for. I participated last year. Last year was my very first year, and it was really, really fun, so I had to do it again. I have to read it, because these, these questions are pretty detailed. Okay or challenges, why do I keep saying questions? Challenge number one, salmon, salmon, Samhain, I think it is. Samhain is a time for honoring your ancestors. So once again, pick a book that features your heritage. For this one, I have chosen The Wise and the Wicked, and this is a generational story about witches, and they have migrated to America from Russia. That's the only link I can draw from this. My family does have Russian in us. I think we have like German, Russian, French, English, we're just, we're, we're everything. We're, we're a lot of things on my dad's side of the family. So this follows a family of witches who have come from Russia. In this family, they all have kind of like a prophecy or a vision of how they're gonna die. And it has always come true until Ruby's great aunt passes away a totally different way than her vision said that she was. And this kind of gives everybody hope as in maybe they can control their own futures and maybe like their destiny is also like changeable and they can kind of go out and do what they really want to do and make their own destinies. So I think that this book kind of has like that question of are things set in stone or is destiny changeable or is it a combination of both? And it sounds really, really great. I also love reading stories about witches, so I can't wait to read this. It just sounds Amazing. Challenge number two. This Sabbath is a time when the veil is thinnest. Pick a book that features communing with the dead ghosts or mediumship or necromancy. For this one, I have chosen Gideon the Ninth, and this is by Tamsin Muri, and I am so excited to read this. Don't know a lot going into it. I know it has to do with necromancy. I know that it takes place in space. I know that. What else do I know? Not a lot. Charles Strauss has become like the spokesperson for this book because I just keep quoting this person. But anyways, lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space. Check. Okay, challenge number three. It says, we are heading into the darkest part of the year. Pick a book that promises to be dark 
and twisted. And for this one, I have chosen The Book of Lost Things, and this is by John Connolly. And isn't this the most beautiful book you've ever seen in your whole life? Oh my gosh. This is an adult fantasy novel, I believe. This book is about a boy named David, and David is mourning the loss of his mother who has just passed away when he starts to hear his books whispering to him. Already we're getting a little creepy. The books are telling him that he can go to a magical world. And when he gets there, he realizes that it's a lot scarier and more twisted and sinister than he first thought that it was going to be. Prompt number four, or challenge number four. Witches often make offerings to spirit guides or gods. Pick a book that involves a pantheon of deities. I hope I said that word right. Okay, so I'm very excited about this one. I have chosen Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. I feel like I did a really good job because this book is about two twins, Dodger and Roger, and their father is trying to make them gods. So there we go, we've got the deities right there. Well, I mean, not quite, because I don't think that they're actually gods. Um, I think that something bad happens if they become gods, like maybe their father gets too much power. I, I don't know. I don't know a lot about it. I've heard really good things about it. I'm very, very, very excited to read this. I've heard it's very spooky and twisted and um, I'm ready. Challenge number five, pick a book that has fire on the cover. Boom. That's, can you tell that's fire? Come on and light my fire. Killing it. Challenge number six. Many celebrate the Sabbath as Halloween and dress up. Post a picture of your costume and tag the readathon. And you bet your bottom dollar I will be doing that. And then finally, prompt number seven is to read the group pick book, and that is Gideon the Ninth, which absolutely I 100% will. It's already on my TBR. As you can see, we're good. I'm very excited. Okay, so that is it for my Witchathon TBR. Now we will move on to my personal TBR. So I'm doing two buddy reads in the month of October. The first buddy read is a buddy read that actually started this month in September. However, um, I kind of haven't been reading it, so I'm just going to push it to October, and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, and I am reading this with my friend Soleil, and I will go ahead and link her channel down below as well. This is kind of a classic booktube staple book. It's about a guy named Kel who can go to different versions of London, but they are like alternative realities, kind of. He can turn his cloak, I believe, and that's how he goes from one London to another. And he meets a girl and they get into some hijinks and adventures and that's all I know. I'm very excited to read this though. The next book I'm reading is probably my most anticipated book out of this entire list and I'm reading it with one of my best friends and that is Ali Corvair. I will link her channel down below as well. And we are reading Serpent and Dove and this is by Shelby Marin. Marin? I can't wait for this. I didn't even know about this book until Allie like brought it to my attention and she picked out The Wicked Deep last year, I think, and that was one of the best books like of the year that I read. I loved it so much. So Allie has like really good taste and really good instincts. I can't wait to read this book. So this is about a witch who flees her coven and a witch hunter who runs across her on his path, I think, to like go out and hunt more witches. And I don't know much more other than it's like a forbidden enemies to lovers love story between a witch and a witch hunter. What a winning story already. Like, I'm so excited. I wanna start this now, but I'm holding off until October 1st and I can't wait. Okay, so we are wrapping this up with the last three books that I have right here. The first one is a classic and it's Neil Gaiman's Coraline. I have not seen the movie. I have not read the book. I am so excited. All I know is that it's about this little girl named Coraline who finds a door, I think in either her closet or her bedroom. She goes down there and she finds that she has a second set of parents down there who want her to sew buttons to her eyes. And, um, Perfect, I'm sold. I really wanna read this and then I wanna watch the movie. So I've heard that the movie's really, really good. Next I've got The Cheerleaders and this is by Kara Thomas and I've been wanting to read this for quite a long time. It is a YA 
thriller slash I think horror book. This is about a girl named Monica and Monica's sister and her entire cheerleading squad have all died mysteriously and Monica does not think that it was an accident. So it's kind of like a murder mystery. She's trying to figure out what happened to her sister and to all of the cheerleaders who have all died. I've heard mixed reviews on this, but I am still really, really curious, so I can't wait to give it a shot. Next, I have These Witches Don't Burn, and this is by Isabel Sterling. Oh, that's my cat's name. <laughs> so this book is about a girl named Hannah, and Hannah is a elemental witch, and she lives in Salem, Massachusetts, and she has to team up with her ex-girlfriend, Veronica, who is also a witch, and they have to track down and take down something called a blood witch, which apparently is like a bad witch causing mayhem in their town, maybe? I don't know, maybe that's really wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I know that the cover looks cool and I love that it takes place in Salem, Massachusetts and I love that it's all about witches. These are all of my favorite things can't wait. And then finally, I will be doing a reread of the Diviner series by Libba Bray because I have not read Layer of Dreams and I am pretty like iffy on all of the details. It's a really, really big book. Like they're all really, really big books. This is great if you're interested in YA horror, <laughs> which is something that I am terrified of. And the first time I read this book, I was so scared. I almost didn't finish it, but I loved the first book so much. Libba Bray is one of my favorite authors of all time. And I saw that Emma Books and Monica and Sarah are all doing a re-readathon of this book. So I'm gonna be participating. I think that starts October 24th. I just saw that today. So I don't know any details about that but it sounds really fun. In addition to all of these very spooky stories, I will also be watching my favorite spooky movies. I feel like October is just kind of the perfect time to really get into your favorite spooky series and TV shows and movies and books. It's just like the best time in my opinion. I was watching Allie from Hardback Hoarder and she does bingos every single year and she has really awesome templates that she lets you copy and fill out yourself. And so this is my template, but this is from Allie's channel. And I'll go ahead and link her channel and her video down below so that if you wanna make a spooky time movie or book bingo card, you can. I had a lot of fun filling mine out, so if you are interested in that, I highly recommend that you do it as well. I am 100% doing the spooky bingo card. Well, you guys, that is everything. That is my probably overly ambitious TBR. I can't wait. I am so happy that it's finally October. Are you reading anything this October? If you are, please let me know what your most anticipated read is of the month. Maybe I'll add it to my TBR. I love you so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book. And I will talk to you later. Bye.